Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Unreal Return to Napoli. On the last episode we found the UMS Prometheus, the ship that we were looking for when we landed on this planet. And that was our mission, right? Well, we couldn't get down to the UMS Prometheus in the last episode because the drop would kill us. But in this episode we're able to get down this ledge here, ledge by ledge, Get some Dolly Fruit Seeds if we need it. And keep going. That boulder, by the way, with the Teridium Shards, um, is just level consistency. And that boulder, if you remember in the last episode, near the collapsible bridge and the Nolly, well, that was uh, that would be where it would lead. I'll see you look in the right there, and I hope you didn't miss it, but there's a little ledge up there. And that would be where, in the last episode, we had that big panoramic view of the UMS Prometheus. So they have a nice level consistency here. And I like that. And I like that they kind of prevent you from um, shortcutting into another level as well. Because if you did, you would get killed from the fall. At any rate, we got lucky that these gas bags are fighting each other. And if you remember in the Nali Castle, in the last episode, we had to deal with the gas bags and the giant gas bag. But even so, even a pumped up hyper version of a gas bag is not that difficult. I think gas bags really in open spaces is just poor selection of uh, enemies, but at any case, it's not much of a challenge, so might as well get rid of it. The UMS Prometheus itself is a very, very, very large ship. And it's so large that um, I think it actually creates a few graphical glitches, which you will see later in this episode. Also, this episode will be divided into two separate parts. I'm quite busy this weekend, so I'm not able to get everything out. I pre-recorded this earlier this week. Actually, I think it was Thursday or Friday that I recorded this. And I feel, since it's kind of a 20-minute episode altogether, it would be better off to divide this up. Here we've got a mercenary that we have to deal with. And this time the mercenaries, again, remember in the last game, they could have the weapons that we have, and this time, guess what? They've got a rocket launcher. But fortunately, they can't hit worse shit, so... You know, and the rocket launcher is very easy to avoid. Now, before we go up into there, I want to kind of show you how expansive the UMS Prometheus is. And I also want to show you an area of the level where you normally wouldn't be able to go. Uh, remember that jump trick I showed you, I think, in Nork's Elbow in the last game? Well, if you do that, you can kind of shortcut around here and look at some other sections of the ship. And you can kind of look at the back end of it. And if you go this way, and yes, ignore the uh, screeching from the fauna there. But anyways, you'll go here, you'll see that the ship is kind of uh, separated into two sections there. I don't know if it was uh, kind of like the Titanic when it fell or what, but you'll see there's kind of a graphical glitch as well in front of us. I think they uh, kind of anticipated you never going this way, but you can kind of glitch the game out a little bit and go this way. But you can kind of see how expansive the UMS Prometheus is. And we'll be going into all of this shit, by the way. It's kind of like, uh, if you remember the Sun Spire, how it didn't look like it could hold the entire level. Well, it can. And this level is kind of a maze. And a little confusing. I can also hear another mercenary in here. And at this point, I'm trying to figure out what strategy I'd like to use to get rid of it. Also, an amplifier there. Definitely use it, or take it. We're not going to need the amplifier yet, because most of my hit scan weapons are gone. And, um, the SMD is the best of amplifier sometimes, I think. Thankfully, we can, uh, kind of take care of this mercenary with our secondary fire from the grenade launcher. And we will be using the rocket launcher soon enough. The mercenaries aren't too bright, but the strength in the mercenary is in their numbers. And like sand people, they don't always try to ride single file, you know. Well, I guess that didn't make much sense, but they come in large numbers. They, it seems like they have uh, kind of taken over the ship. It's 
So we have to deal with that. And this ship doesn't look like any... Well, it doesn't look anything like Terraniax in the last game, so... I'm pretty sure they're trying to point out that the mercenaries probably hijacked the ship. Like a pirate or something. And, um... There's probably a fight of some of uh, a na some nature or whatever, and they probably crashed the ship or something, or maybe I'm just hypothesizing at this point. Perhaps we'll find out later what happened, but that's what it looks like. What happened. They do give you a lot of mercenaries, and most of them do have rocket launchers. Thankfully, instead of the stingers like we had to face in a couple of episodes back in Glathriel Village, I believe it was. Now, here I'm just trying to kind of listen for the mercenaries to make sure that they're dead. Because as I said, they come out in large numbers. They may come out up to four at a time in some of these parts of the level. This level is sort of symmetrical, but don't go that way, by the way. that The way that I opened up with the lift. Um, oh, and this is kind of neat, that little bed that was floating there. But Anyways, you need to go this way across the bridge. Kind of a nice little bridge generator that they planted there. A little bit of detail for a game in the late 90s. That's pretty good. And you'll see that sign that, that said uh, turbo lift earlier. We need to head there eventually, but first we've got a lot more mercenaries to deal with. And the combat assault rifle is a good weapon for these guys. And here I kind of made a big mistake where I kind of cornered myself at the end of this bridge. But like I said, the uh, combat assault rifle is really good against these guys. But of course it wastes ammo like you wouldn't believe, so... The trouble is, is that you're not going to have this weapon for every single mercenary. So you kind of have to be careful and... Uh, uh, carefully ration out your ammo so that you're not wasting it all the time. And these doors close really quickly. And it looks like the mercenaries have difficulty opening some of these doors, so use that to your advantage. Either that or they're just too stupid to figure out how to open a door. Which is possible. I mean... But even my dog knows how to open a door somewhat. I mean, she doesn't know how to turn a doorknob, obviously, but she can paw at the door and push it open, and she has a concept of a door, and that a door moves, and you can open it and close it. Whereas these mercenaries seem to... They don't learn too well about what a door is, what a door does, you know. And when a door is not a door, and that's when it's a jar. But that's a bad joke. And here we got another mercenary. And I'm trying to figure out what weapon I want to use. I think I tried to use a stinger because I have plenty of uh, rounds, but the problem with the stinger is that it's not hit scan, it's a projectile weapon, and it goes about 5 or 10 pixels below the crosshair. And of course I alerted the mercenary to my pre uh, my presence, so obviously he's gonna look for me now. Or she's gonna look for me. I think they're all heat. Maybe they're like Faringis, you know, the females don't do anything in the ship. And maybe their females aren't allowed to wear clothes either, just like the Faringis and Faringar. And if they're pirates, well, maybe they've got something to do with, uh, Maybe they've got something in common with friends. They don't have big ears, though. And even though Ferengis get a bad rap in Star Trek series, they get a better, better reputation in Deep Space Nine. I kind of find them interesting because they're actually very intelligent, even though they're very greedy. But anyways, this wraps up this section of the episode or the Let's Play, rather. Uh, the next section will be out tomorrow, um, if I can get it out in time. Uh, so thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.